Bob from Bob's Workshop. Most of the videos that I make for this channel have something to do with O-scale trains. Usually I'm painting Lionel locomotives. Sometimes I'm making buildings to go on my O-scale layout. Well, you can't really have trains and buildings without also having a few vehicles on your layout. So today I'm going to highlight two recent additions to the Bob's Workshop collection, some German cars in 143rd scale that I picked up on eBay. I really like when sellers include the Make Offer button in their auctions. This one came from Canada, so I also had a tab open to compare US currency to Canadian. I ended up paying about 20 American dollars, which included shipping. It's not a train show price, but the odds are really high against finding something like this at a train show. So, what is a 1938 Hork 853A Cabriolet? I'm glad you asked. Hork, along with DKW, Wanderer, and Audi, formed Auto Union in the 1930s. Their logo was represented by four interlocked circles, one for each of the founding brands, and it's still the present-day logo for Audi. A Hork was a luxurious car, comparable to any of the big Mercedes from the same time period. This model is made by Altea. It's a die-cast car, so it's pretty heavy. But what impresses me the most are the number of separate small detailed parts all over this thing. The mirrors are chromed pieces mounted to each spare tire. Each wheel itself must be made of at least five or six individual parts. The bumpers, headlights, hood ornament, they're all separate pieces too. I can't really imagine how long it would take to assemble one of these. Convertibles, or cabriolets, are some of my favorite scale cars, especially with models as detailed as this. The carpeting is a different color than the seats. The grab handles, window cranks, the shift lever, and the parking brake have all been highlighted in carefully applied silver paint. Here is my second recent eBay purchase. A few people bid against me, which drove the price up a little bit, but after $10.95 for shipping, plus whatever sales tax was, I had this a few days later for less than 30 bucks. For whatever reason, I usually picture cars from the 1930s in black, or some other dark color. So the two tones of green here kind of stood out to me. And it still had a black interior, which I think is pretty cool. This was listed as used, and the seller mentioned that it was missing the cardboard outer box that originally protected the plastic one. That's okay with me as long as the model itself was still pristine. And it was. Or is. It's really nice. Paul's Model Art, or Mini Champs, crafted this masterpiece in 143rd scale, and the level of detail here is even better than the last car. In my mind, Mini Champs is hard to beat, and elsewhere on eBay, someone was asking $152 for this same car. That's a lot. Most of the time, I'd expect to see sellers asking 70 or 80 bucks for this. 
which I'd never pay, but I always factor in shipping and tax when I shop on eBay, so even a total of 30 was more than I normally like to pay. But I'm glad I did. So, what is a Maybach Zeppelin? Maybach began making aircraft engines that would power Germany's hydrogen-filled Zeppelins of the 20s and 30s. They made their first car in 1921 and ended automotive production in the early 1940s. At that time, they switched to making tank engines. Nearly all German tanks from the Panzer I to the King Tiger were powered by Maybach. In the 1930s, Zeppelins were the most luxurious way to travel. I don't know if the car pictured here is a Maybach, but the company chose to call their top-of-the-line model the Zeppelin. If you collect or are interested in little model cars, then I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, would it kill you to like and subscribe? No, I don't think so, but it's up to you. So until next time, this has been Bob's Workshop. Take care.